Good morning and welcome. It's Jen. I'm so glad that you could join me here on my channel and at my craft table. So today is installment five of my Cricut Summer Series. Today's project is going to be making some fun summertime koozies using the Cricut Infusible Ink transfer sheets. So I am super excited to bring you these. I have to tell you, I am a little bit sad because prior to making this video, I had actually made a video using the sublimation koozie um, substrates and I used the infusible ink markers. So this actually is for my husband for Father's Day and I made him an infusible ink mug to go with it. He, um, yes, he does like crypto. So we just tease each other that I love Cricut and he loves crypto, so it is a marriage made in heaven. But anyway, I was about ready to wrap that video up and then all of a sudden the software completely crashed. So um, this particular project that I wanted to bring you before I started this one is now lost somewhere in the, um, the uh, stratosphere of pipe dreams. But anyway, if you would like to see a video that shows you how to make an infusible ink mug and or an infusible ink uh, marker project like this, if you'll let me know down in the comments, I have plenty of recipients that would love some gifts like that. And I can totally recreate that experience with you using um, various designs, etc., with infusible ink sheets and the markers. So I would love to um, show you those things and how they work. But on to today's project. So what you're gonna need is, um, you'll need some sublimation koozies. Now I just got these at Michael's. These are great to use. I'm really pleased with how the other one turned out. So I really like these and I actually got these on sale and then had a teacher discount. So that was really nice. You can get these anywhere at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Amazon, or your favorite crafting supply. The other thing I have is some um, infusible ink transfer sheets. Now I'm gonna be using two different designs. So one design will be using the Rainbow Mermaid that you see here, and another will be using just this rainbow pattern. So I think that will be super fun. The rest of the materials that you need for a project like this are things like you will need your, a pressing mat, some butcher paper, a weeding tool, tweezers, scissors. You will also need a lint roller and your favorite press. I will be using the Cricut Easy, uh, yes, the Cricut Easy Press 2 today. And so before we get to putting these materials together, let's hop into design space and I'm gonna show you some elements. And I'm actually going to also show you how to do some creative slicing to change a design that was already in design space to one that is custom for you. Okay, so here I am in design space and I am going to be creating the koozies today with these two designs here. So the one on the right, this particular design right here is just one that I found in design space and I really like it. I think it's fun. My daughter is all about swimming and summer and just really enjoying her time off from school with her friends. So I thought that would be great. And so I'm gonna go ahead while I'm thinking about it and I'm gonna resize this to about 3.75 um, so the, the uh, space that my koozie has to sublimate on is three and a half wide by four inches tall. So I'm gonna move that just kind of over here for now. And then I have this design here. Now I actually created part of this design um, using two different things. The summer with the sunshine, the summertime with sunshine, it actually had a palm tree over here on the right hand side. And I'm not a palm tree kind of girl, so, but I do like flip flops. So I decided to go ahead and be able to um, design 
my own little image, I used a flip-flop design. I'm going to show you how to do that, and I got rid of the palm trees. While I'm thinking about this one, I'm going to go ahead and resize this one to 3.75. So these are going to be what we put on our koozies here in just a little bit. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just hide those over here in my layers panel. So the next thing that I want to show you is I'm going to bring in a large version of the summertime. So this is the original design and I was not too keen on the palm tree. The other thing that I loved was the flip flops that I found in design space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, remove this palm tree. We're going to be using a creative weld feature and then we're going to turn around and we're going to um, kind of manipulate these flip-flops just a little bit and then we will move them over here and then we will start slicing those out of these bars and it will just be a really awesome design like you saw before. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to bring in, I kind of already made them but I grabbed out of my shapes over here, I grabbed three rectangles. And what I did is I colored them using this color menu up here to match these three bars on the design. The next thing I did is I went through the summer and I found like this is my R and it has a width of 2.39. So I then took this particular rectangle and I also made that 2.39. Now, I'm going to take this rectangle, place it over this bar here, and I'm gonna weld that together and that will get rid of that portion of the pine tree. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if I click on the R and I go down to contour down here in the layers panel, I am unable to get rid of this sliced out area. So the original designer just obviously used a slice feature, which is fine. We can go ahead and totally fix that. So I'm going to leave the R bar highlighted and then I'm gonna go ahead and select the one that is here. And I want to go to a line and a line left. And then I actually want to do a line again and I want to align to the bottom. So now that bar is covering everything it needs to cover and it is um, aligned at the bottom. So it's still horizontally, it is lined up and vertically with these other bars. So while both of those are still selected, I'm gonna go over to combine and I'm going to hit weld. So now I have a new bar R that almost sounds like a ranch. I have a new bar and the pine tree is, or a palm tree is gone. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Wow, my mouse is really going crazy. Sorry about that. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next rectangle. I'm going to grab the E, there we go. And I'm gonna grab that particular rectangle. I'm going to align left and I'm going to align bottom. And then I'm gonna go down to combine and weld. Perfect, those two are done. So then the final one is going to be moving this shorter rectangle over here and covering that portion. So while that bo uh, box is selected, I'm gonna go ahead and select the M column and then I will align left and I do not need to align bottom because I want that E to be visible. So I'm just going to go down to combine and hit weld. All right, so now I have all of my bars. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you notice that the weld results are now up here outside of the attachment. So I'm going to grab each one of these and I'm just going to slide it back down into its place in the attached portion of the design. So now these are all reattached. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is deal with the flip-flops. So when I look at the flip-flops, I have all of these different elements here. So we're going to be doing some slicing and some welding to make the flip-flops the way I need them so that when I move them over here, I can then slice them out of these three bars. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab these two green elements here. That is the little strappy part of the left flip-flop. And I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to hit weld. So now they are one piece. Then I'm going to grab the bottom two portions of the left side flip-flop and I'm going to weld those pieces together. And then I am going to take the pink part of the flip-flop and I'm gonna slide it up here and I'm gonna slide it, you know, not at the bottom or middle, I'm gonna slide it all the way to the top because the order in which it shows up is the order in which it is layered. So you'll notice that the straps are underneath and I'm gonna leave that for right now. So then I'm, I have the pink part of the flip-flop highlighted. I'm gonna go ahead and select the bottom part of the flip-flop, and then I will come down here and I will hit slice. Now I had to weld the first two pieces together because I can only slice two layers at a time. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the pink part of the flip-flop, and I'm going to just delete that. I don't need it. The next thing I'm gonna do is click on this particular slice. I, right here, I don't need that one, I'll delete that. Then I'm going to take this particular strappy part, move it to the top of my layers panel, and then I'm going to grab both of these particular pieces, this one flip-flop, and I'm going to weld that together, okay? So now it looks like this. I'm gonna do the same thing with the right side flip-flop. I'm going to grab both of the green parts of the strap, weld. I'm going to grab both of the lower layers of the flip-flop, the white portions, and weld those. You'll notice that they came to the top and then the straps are underneath, but that'll be okay. And then I am going to uh, take the pink part of the flip-flop. I'm gonna move it to the top so it comes to the top of the layers. I'm going to grab the white underneath layer that I had welded together, and I'm gonna come down and I'm going to click on slice. So the pink slice can get deleted. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, this particular slice result isn't as substantial as this one. So I know that this particular one, if I were to slide it off, just needs to go away. And then I'm left with the flip-flop and then the straps. So I'm gonna move the straps to the top. I'm gonna go ahead and select both of those pieces of the right flip-flop, and then I will click Weld. So now I have two flip-flops that are together. I want to grab both of those and I'm gonna weld again. The reason why I've done that is I want these to stay in this orientation. I don't want them to move and uh, away from each other and I can actually also resize them. I can rotate them, whatever I need to do. So the next thing that I will do is I will bring the flip-flops over here and then I'm going to just resize a little bit and then rotate. So rotating by coming outside that corner, just turning it a little bit. I'm gonna slide them down some like this. And I think that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna do some creative slicing. You'll notice over here in your layers panel that the weld result, these are the flip-flops. And actually, I think what I'm gonna do is double click on weld result, and I'm gonna just say flip-flops. And that way I know what I'm looking at. And then here you can see these three weld results. Now they are in order, so the M is here, then the E, then the R. 
And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be grabbing one bar at a time and selecting it with my flip-flops. Here, I'll just show you. The R is already selected. So I'm gonna select the flip-flops as well. So just those two things. And then I will come down to slice. Okay, so then when I do that, we're gonna leave the flip-flops the way they are. But I'm gonna remove that portion and that portion. So now I have sliced out this part and did it get the bottom? Yeah. Okay, so it did, it sliced everything out. Let me hit my undo button so I can move that back into place. So these particular pieces will get deleted. Then right here where it says slice result, that is what's left of my flip flops. Okay, and then I will select my E and then I will do slice. Okay, so then I will just start grabbing. I don't wanna grab this one. Let me hit undo. Okay, so then I'm going to grab this particular slice result and that needs to come away. I'm going to grab the blue slice that needs to come away. And then, let's see, down in here, we're gonna leave that where it was just for the moment. Okay, so these are gonna get deleted. All right, so now I have them sliced out of my E and then finally we're going to do the M. So I'm gonna again grab the remaining part of the flip-flops here in the top of my layers panel and I'm going to grab the M, then I will hit slice. Okay, so when I do that, I can then remove the portion that was in between the two bars that needs to get deleted. And then I can start grabbing the part that needs to come out of the green bar. These will get deleted. And now I have my three bars and they have their flip-flop impression sliced out of them. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to move them back down one at a time into the attached version of the graphic. So now that all of these are together, all right, Okay, so all of this is one thing, and now this can get resized to whatever I need it to be. Okay, so that's how I made that original one. So it would be small like that, okay? Then let's see, we need the summer the other one. I'm actually going to go ahead and make it just big for right now. Now you can tell that this is a lot of different elements if you look in here. Okay, that's a lot of different things. This designer spent a lot of time putting this together. I'm very happy that they did. But what I'm going to do is I am going to just attach all of that. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I have the whole thing selected. I'm gonna come down to combine and I'm gonna hit weld. Okay, so what you can see is that this now is all one color, which is totally fine with me. Um, what I am noticing is, do you see all these little pieces in here? Okay, um, I'm wondering if go to contour. What I want to see if I can do, I'm gonna blow this up, move this, is I kind of want to, 
I want to keep I want to keep the S but I want to get rid of the other little tiny things like this that's what I want to get rid of those so this is gonna take me a moment um, I'm not sure I think this is why it took forever see all of these tiny little spots right here I think I can just get rid of all of these but I'm not a hundred percent sure of where they are because my I'm so zoomed out the only thing is is I don't think there's anything in the other letters so I think I am just going to go through here and I'm just going to hide all of those little pieces Okay, that took me a couple of minutes, but I have everything hidden except for the words like this. Okay, so the words, the little embellishments like this, all of the inners, those things are left. So now I am happy with the result. And then I will just resize this to 3.75.
Okay, so we have this here. So now both of our designs are ready to be cut out from our mats. Okay, so before we do that, let's go over to, I'm gonna be doing this on my Maker. You could do this on the Joy simply because they're sized pretty small, but I'm gonna be using my Maker 3 today and I want to go over to the Make screen. We're gonna go double check that everything looks the way it's supposed to. All right, so you'll notice that automatically you can see that the summer bar design is dismantled. So I'm going to come over this way back to here. I'm going to select all of this design and then I'm going to click attach. It does change the, um, it just does change the color to all one color. Now that's fine because the infusible ink sheet that I am using is a rainbow color design. So I don't need to worry about that. Okay, so this right here is one image. I don't need to worry about that one. Go back to our make screen. So we can see that we have the swimming um, design up here in the top left corner. And let's see, we are going to mirror that because we are using infusible ink. So it does get mirrored just like your um, uh, heat transfer, you know, the iron on vinyl. Then I'm gonna to go to the second mat. Now here's my summer design with the flip-flops. I'm actually going to move this to the first mat. Now we'll turn it yellow. I'm not really concerned about that. I'm gonna move one of these over here, but this will automatically mirror for me because that is what is set for this mat. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I can take a, I can take a uh, square of infusible ink and put it here and then one here and I will be just fine. The one thing I am noticing is that they do um, they do seem right here to be they coming outside of the four but that doesn't mean that they're four inches square. There is a lip right here. So I'm going to be just putting a square large enough for each design in the top corners and then we'll get those cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Okay, now that we are connected to the Maker 3, um, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet. If you don't already have that bookmarked, you can find that by going to Browse All Materials. Then I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at default pressure and I've got my fine point blade loaded. All right, so the next thing to do is to get the mats loaded with the material and then cut out. So I will do that off camera and see you in just a moment. Okay, so I have the infusible ink put down on the mat and you wanna have the ink side face up and the carrier shiny side down on the mat. And then you just grab your brayer and adhere that really well to your mat. So I was a little disappointed when I opened my box and realized that the, um, the mermaid rainbow part, we actually had used pretty much all of that. So I don't have enough for um, one of the koozies, but my daughter really loves pink. So this particular section right here will be great for the image that she would like and then this one here will be the one that um, I have for the other one so it's not a big deal we're just going to roll with what we have so now that we've got everything squared away on our mat I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out and then we'll get it pressed onto our substrate so now that my vinyl is or my yes my infusible ink is already cut out I want to show you one more thing before we go to the overhead camera and that is the heat guide if you go to the home screen of your design space and you go down here all the way to the left down where the wavy lines are it'll say heat guide and when you click on that then you can select the machine that you're using 
you can select your material. So we are using, uh, where is it? Infusible ink transfer sheet. There it is. And um, all of these, I've tested them out before. I'm just going to put cosmetic bag because what I have found is that they tend to be mostly the same. And I'm going to click apply. And then this will give you the temperature setting, the time setting, how you should stack everything, the supplies you need, the prep, the application, and the care. So it's always a good idea to check your heat guide. Now, one thing that I noticed is that on the packaging of these sublimation koozies, it says to press to 365 degrees Fahrenheit, but do not exceed 365. So 356 to 365, and that is a huge difference from this one here that says 385. If you are um, using Celsius, then that would be anywhere from 180 to 185 degrees Celsius. So um, this says 60 seconds, but the packaging says that to press it for 80 seconds. So I am going to err on the side of the manufacturer and I am going to um, I am going to do the 385. Um, I'm not going to do the 385 because it says do not exceed 365. I'm going to make sure that I don't go over that amount, but I am going to press it for longer. Um, that probably won't be an issue. Okay, so let's go to our overhead camera and start getting this weeded and onto our koozies. When you go to remove your infusible ink, I'm just going to turn it over the same way I do with my other vinyls. And then here we have, I'm going to cut, this is one design here. And this is the other design right here. And then this particular piece, I can save that for a future project. So I'll just stick that back in the box. Now, the awesome thing about infusible ink is that it's kind of like, in a way, it's kind of like, um, like scrapbook paper or really thin cardstock on a shiny carrier sheet. And that allows you to crack, gotta love the cracking sound. You are just going to crack the design. And then once you kind of got everything, you know, um, kind of broken up, so to speak, then you can remove all of the things that you don't want. And you really want to try to not use um, a weeding tool unless absolutely necessary. I do keep one handy in case I have to move something tiny around, but otherwise tweezers work just fine. Okay, so once I have that all done, then I, let's see, I am going to start a spot over here and I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the perimeter first okay. and you'll notice that your infusible ink weeds really really nicely The only thing on this particular design, this is the one with the bars in the summer, is that I want to be really mindful of the flip-flops. And for instance, I'm just going to press this down with my weeding tool. There's a tiny piece right here and it needs to come up and that needs to stay down. So I'm just going to be mindful of these flip-flop pieces. And make sure that the tiny spots are going to stay where they need to stay. I 
still cannot, for the life of me, believe that I spent a good amount of time creating a video to show you the previous project. That was, it was so good, y'all. But all of a sudden, I go to wrap it up, and then um, my software says, we've encountered a problem. That just made me kind of sad. All right. So I'm just getting these tiny little um, circles that are left. And then I'm going to get the rays of the sunshine and the rest of the words and the insides of the words. But I'm just looking here at these flip-flops. They turned out really well. Look at that. That's great. Okay, so we have... And I'm putting these tiny pieces in this little bowl. I keep this little bowl from my kitchen. I kind of stole it from my kitchen. And I just keep it over here. And these tiny spots like this, I throw in there. And then I can just dump the whole thing into the um, my little um, trash, you know, craft trash bin that I've created. And that way I don't get infusible ink where it doesn't need to go. Okay. This is, oh, there's my press. Okay, so this one is ready to go and I'm just gonna double check one more time. It says summertime and I've got the flip-flops. So I'm really pleased at how that slicing and welding turned out. That worked really, really well. So I'm just going to set that aside for right now. Get rid of that big piece there. Do that. Okay, so this one is the one with all the words. And I am going to, again, just crack all this stuff here. And hopefully... All those tiny little spots that are in here that need to stay down stay down so I will keep my scissors handy because I'll probably go in like sections and then just cut away the big portions so that they're not in the way that's I have found that that's pretty easy okay so Let's see, I need to find a starting point. Well, I'll just start with this right here. Okay, so the big question of the day is, do you have plants for summer? This is the start of my second week of summer. And um, contrary to what it seems like, um, even though I don't have to go back to school until the fall, there will still be some working. So I am hoping to have as much fun as I can. I'm going to probably not do any big trips, but we'll definitely do some hiking and swimming, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Hanging around with family, working on content for you guys. But I like to live vicariously through others. So if you have any awesome major plans, I would love to hear about them. All right, so basically this is what I mean. I'm just going slow and steady. And this is this design is quite intricate compared to my previous one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and get this weeded out. Speed this up for you, and then we will continue on with the project.
Okay, I think I've got it all weeded out. Before I move on, I'm just going to double check. Um, let me get a dark background. Okay, so we're just going to double check that we've got swimming, sunny, hot, sun, pool, splash, heat, swim again sunshine and summer. It looks like I've got everything on there and everything I don't need is off of there. So I'm going to set that aside. Okay, and we're going to move all of these out of the way. Okay, we want to make sure we don't have any extra pieces that we don't need. Okay, so now we're going to bring in the pressing mat. And we got these two here. Okay, so I'm actually gonna press both of these at the same time. And let me pull these out of here. If you are a card maker, then I would save these, this acetate right here. And let me pull it off. Um, actually, it makes great shaker material. So I'm gonna go ahead and Save those for some card making. Okay. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put, I've got some butcher paper folded up, and I'm going to go ahead and just put it inside each one of these. And this is to protect against bleed through. And I've actually had really good luck with these. And then I'm going to just put this butcher paper down on my pressing mat so that I am protecting the surface of the mat. I don't think there's gonna be a problem, but you never know. Then, Something we cannot forget is the lint roller. Okay. And then pull these back. These are my way there. All right, so the next thing is to place the designs on the koozies, and we want to get them as centered as we can. Okay, that's one there. And then I'm going to place this one over here. This will be exciting. My daughter loves to swim. She helped me make her pool bag and we made some monogrammed towels as well and she absolutely loves the pool bag. I think it's mostly because she helped with getting it um, put together. So we move this one over just ever so slightly. There we go. Okay, and then I am going to place another piece of butcher paper on top. Like so. And grab the, uh, the press. Okay, we're going to go straight down and we're going to use firm pressure and just let it go. Okay, now that we're done, I'm just going to lift this straight up. And with any luck, we will have a successful project.
All right, there is one. And there is two. Oh my gosh, those came out so good. And you can see all of the ink has transferred from the sheet onto the koozie. Same with this one. And then sometimes you get these little tiny pieces left behind. And you, I just grabbed my weeding tool and pulled them off. Look at that, y'all. That is amazing. That is so deep and vibrant. I was not expecting that. Okay, and then we've got a couple little pieces here. Now this one looks like, I'll just show you. You can see the variation in the pink. So that turned out so good. I think I'm just going to have to go get some more of these koozies and make a whole bunch of these. And then we have this one. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then my husband will have his cute little crypto dog one dare. This one was done with the infusible ink markers and not too bad. I had never done that type of project before, so it came out okay. Not, not as amazing as these really, but okay. So, all right. Well, I hope that you found this to be an informative and inspiring video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and the notification bell so that you know the next time that we post some fun summer projects or really whatever projects. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. Okay, well, I hope that you found this video was informative and inspiring. And if you in any way would like to see me do a new video for the infusible ink markers, let me know down in the comments. I'm still very sad that that one just crashed on me, but these turned out amazing. I am so pleased. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and share so that you can stay with me as we craft some amazing things this summer and beyond. And until I see you next time, happy crafting.